avocado soup. Today, I'm lucky enough to be sharing with you a family recipe to this delicious Mexican soup. So let's get started. We will begin by preparing a poblano chili. These are native to Mexico and a hugely popular ingredient in day-to-day -day Mexican cuisine. They are widely available outside of Mexico, but I'll leave a few suggestions to substitutes in the description box below if you can't find them. Over to the stove and place the chili straight onto a naked flame. Some people may be uncomfortable doing this, but it's safe and it's the best way to blacken the skin. If you haven't got gas, then consider using a blowtorch or a very hot dry frying pan or kamal. The blackening of the skin is doing two things, developing the flavor in the chili and making it easy to peel. As you can see, there isn't plumes of smoke coming off the chili or anything else too extreme. Just keep the heat on medium and turn the chili regularly, getting every part of the skin charred. Once that's done, place it into a bowl or a container whilst it's still hot. Place a lid on and let it sit and sweat for at least 10 minutes. This is going to make the skin peel off really easily. Next, we are going to prepare a garnish called totopos for this amazing soup. Here I have three corn tortillas. I'm just cutting them into strips, just under one centimeter or one third of an inch wide. Then spin 90 degrees and cut across so you have little fingers of tortillas around three centimeters or one inch long. Then over to the stovetop and place a frying pan onto a medium high heat and add around two tablespoons of a neutral tasting oil. Let that heat for one to two minutes and add in your sliced tortilla. Move them around regularly so everything's coated in oil and so they don't burn. Usually totopos would be deep fried, but we can achieve a very similar result by pan frying like this. If you want to deep fry them, then all the steps are exactly the same. If you can't get corn tortillas, then you could also do this same process with a flour-based tortilla. You know they are done when they sound crispy like this. Place them onto a tray or a plate lined with paper towel to drain off any excess oil. Spread them out and sprinkle a tiny amount of salt over them. This will help them to stay crisp. Place them to one side for later. Next, we are going to prepare the onion for this soup. We want a really fine dice, so I'm going to show you a different method to how I would usually dice an onion. Get a medium-sized white onion and cut it in half through the root, then peel off the first layer of flesh, as well as the papery layer if your onion has that on. Take the top off and slice the root out at an angle like this. Then cut the onion in half again in the same direction as the lines. Now take the onion apart, keeping two layers together and save the very center for something else like a salad. Push the onion segment flat with your fingers and following the lines, slice as thin as you can. Then spin all the slices 90 degrees and line them up with one another and slice across, resulting in this super fine dice. Take your time with this. A nice, fine, consistent dice makes all the difference to making this soup delicate and luxurious. An uneven, chunky dice will just do it no justice at all. This is a great skill to have and can be used for a variety of things like a base to start a classical French style sauce. I'll leave a weight you need of diced onion down in the description box below. Once that's all done, place it into a bowl and to one side for later. Onto the garlic, we are going to fine dice this as well. I already have a short video on how to fine dice garlic, so if you're not sure or you want something more in depth, then I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. I like to take the tail off the clove, slice it in half lengthways, then slice across the half clove, keeping the top intact so it holds everything together. Then slice into it horizontally a few times and slice across that, resulting in a fine dice. A microplane would also be a great option. Place that into a dish for later. The poblano chili has had its time in the dish and is ready to be peeled. I like to use this round tipped utility knife to peel the skin off, but a butter knife or even a spoon would work just as well. So holding the stalk, scrape lightly down towards the tip of the chili. The charred skin should come away quite easily. Once you have all the skin removed, just lightly wipe the chili with the paper towel to make sure there are no bits of black skin remaining. Then slice down from the stalk, open up the chili and using the knife, scrape out the seeds. Usually poblanos don't have too many seeds inside. Then just roughly dice the chili. They will be going into a liquidizer so this doesn't have to be too accurate. Place that into a container or bowl and to one side for later. Onto the avocados. Here I have three medium sized, perfectly ripe avocados. Ripeness is very important for this dish. To tell if your avocado is ready, just give it a gentle squeeze. It should feel soft, but with some firmness. And also pull the stalk out. It should come away really easily and be green underneath. For these, we are just going to slice them in half, remove the pit and scoop the flesh out into a bowl or container. You want somewhere between 500 and 600 grams or 17.5 to 21 ounces of whole avocados for this dish. These three for me were just above 600 grams. 
Once that's all done, then we are going to blend these three ingredients together in a liquidizer. 500 ml or roughly one pint of chicken stock, the poblano chili and the avocado. Traditionally, this soup uses chicken stock, but this dish could easily be made vegan by changing this to a vegetable stock. So into the liquidizer first goes the chili, then the avocado, lastly the stock. Then blend this on high speed until you have a smooth consistency like this. What I have here is too thick for this soup, but I can't fit any more volume into my blender. So I'm just going to add more stock when we are cooking this soup. The 500 mils or one pint is an approximate starting point. So you can add more later if needed. Now over to the stovetop. Here I have a four liter, four quart saucepan. Place that onto a medium heat and add roughly two tablespoons of a neutral tasting oil. I'm using avocado oil. Allow that to heat for one to two minutes and add in your super fine diced onion and a little pinch of salt. Cook these onions on a medium heat, stirring regularly for at least two minutes. Then add in your finely diced garlic and continue to cook for another two minutes at least. We are not looking for any browning at all. So keep an eye on your pan and lower your heat if necessary. Cook these until softened and translucent like this. Now add in the avocado puree. And for me, I'm adding another 250 ml or roughly half a pint of stock. Stir all that together and keeping the heat on medium while stirring regularly, bring the soup up to temperature. We don't want to boil this soup or cook it out for a long period of time. We want to keep its beautiful freshness. Bring it up to around 80 degrees Celsius, 175 F for two minutes and that's it. At this point, taste for seasoning. I used a homemade salt-free chicken stock, so I'm going to season with salt to get the flavors in balance. If you used a packet stock, then you may not need to use any salt depending on the strength of your stock. Also at this stage, look at the thickness of your soup. Mine is a touch too thick. So I'm going to add a shot of water rather than stock because I'm happy with my flavors and seasoning. To plate this amazing soup, I'm just simply placing a few ladles into this wide bowl and a little pile of totopos in the middle. Then to be chefy, a few coriander or cilantro leaves. And there you have it, a beautifully fresh, rich soup fit for any occasion. And a big thanks to Pata and Sarita for the recipe. I really hope I did it justice. As always guys, ingredients, equipment lists and links to other videos all in the description box below. Alright guys, and that's that. Go check out this video if you want to learn how to make a salt-free, full of flavor stock that will go brilliantly with this avocado soup recipe. See you next time.